stuff that has to be done, especially moms. I mean, moms are in the room, right? You have little ones and you have to take care of them. And so as soon as you get out of bed, you're going. And that's the task again. So I want to encourage you. I used to tell this to all new believers. And I'm not just going to act like all of us are new believers this morning. Uh, maybe regenerate our relationship with Jesus this way. Um, I want to, as soon as you open your eyes in the morning, I want you to thank God. Amen? Mm -hmm. You don't have to do this. I'm just trying to help you as a pastor to help you grow in your faith. Open your eyes and thank God. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Because yesterday had all our trials and tribulations from yesterday. You can't do nothing about them. And what's going to happen in the future that day, you don't know. You, you, don't, you can't handle it on your own anyway. Uh, seriously, you can't. And so we need God's help. And so acknowledge that. So when we acknowledge that, if we say, we open our eyes up in the morning, we say, I acknowledge that, God, I need your help today, then that's kind of really submitting yourself to God's will, right? You say, God, I'm surrendering my will to your will. I just need your help. So Father, thank you for this morning. And then take five minutes. Take five minutes and just thank him for all the things that you can thank him for. All right? Just thank him. Maybe we should start off this way. So enter his courts with thanksgiving and his, and his gates with praise, right? So you take the first five minutes of your day and you just thank him. Thank you, God, for me breathing. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my friend. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my future wife. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, right? Just thank God, right? And then the second part of that scripture says, enter his gates with praise. So let's praise him. Creator of heaven and earth, you are amazing. <laughs> Your love and surrounds me. Your arms, as we sang earlier, comforts me. You open the, the waters coming like a flood, but you make a way for me to walk through them, like you did with the children of Israel who walked right through the water on dry land. But help me to walk through dry land today, right? And just praise Him and praise Him for whatever He's done. And then open up your phone, because you got to answer your bed anyway. Turn your Bible app on and read for five minutes. I do because my, my, my Bible is usually downstairs and my phone is next to my bed. So I, I open up my Bible app, which is right on one of my first pages because I want to have it available to me. And uh, thank you, Rachel. Oh, you're talking to us to, to Lauren, right? I get text messages about everything that's going on. So. So everybody is uh, confirming what we just said. Uh, the enemy's after us, and we know that we're going to have victory. Lauren just repeated that just a minute ago on his testament. So I have a Bible app. And in the Bible apps, version is what I use, but there's many other ones. You can use whatever you want. version has all the different versions of the Bible you can go to. So you can go from King James, NIV, the ESV, through Amplified Bible, to uh, Korean Bible, to Chinese Bible. You can go to every Bible book through version. That's why I like it. Um, and also, I was encouraged you a few weeks ago, which I have a few of you who have done this, which I think is really awesome. I said, read a proverb every day. So in the morning, because you only have five minutes, right? You got five minutes to, to thank God, you got five minutes to praise God, and you got five minutes to read. So a proverb every day, there's like, it takes you about five minutes to read about 30 verses or so. And there's a proverb. So today's proverb, uh, number three, if you go to number three, there's 31 of them, so you can repeat them every month. Right? So every month. And I tell people, like, Solomon was like the most wisest guy that God gave him all this wisdom. And God, when Solomon uh, was able to ask God for anything in the world, God, God said, what do you want, Solomon? You can have anything you want. He could have wealth. He could have whatever he wanted. Cities. He could have most beautiful wife or whatever. He, all he said is, God, I want wisdom to be able to lead your people. And God gave him everything else that he didn't ask for. And wisdom was one of them. Uh, wisdom and, and all the wealth, and he was the richest man ever lived on earth. But then Proverbs, just turn to Proverbs 3. Come on, in your phone app or on your in your Bible, Proverbs chapter 3. One, uh, Joseph, want to help her find Proverbs? Right in the middle, Proverbs like right in the middle of your Bible. You should be open in the middle, Proverbs right about there. This proverb, this is not going to have nothing with my sermon this morning. This is just, I want you to know that 2003 is different, and 2016 is different. And, and we need to be in the Word, we need to pray. And the reason Christians live, look, 
right, let me, let me qualify this uh, for you. If you come on Sunday morning and expect me to help you grow spiritually, you're way behind. It's not my responsibility, it's yours. I got really, you guys got really quiet. I hope I'm glad you did. It's not my responsibility to, to help you grow spiritually. Your responsibility to grow spiritually is my job to encourage you to fight the good fight of faith. It's my job to lay hands on you when you're sick. It's my job to teach you from the Word of God. It's your job to grow spiritually. You ever hear that from a pastor before? Amen. Coming to Sunday morning isn't going to make you a Christian. What you do on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, that will make you a Christian. Amen. When you activate your faith. That's why I want to, that's why I want to encourage you to do this. Praise God. Thank God, praise God, and now read the word. Now look at this. Look, we're going to read the whole thing. But look at this. My son, which include daughters, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep, them, keep my commands for the length of days and years of life and peace. They will be added to you. <laughs> so this, this is just verse 1 and 2. <laughs> What's it It says, if you, you, not me, the pastor teaching you, if you, my son, do not forget my teachings. What's God's teachings? You're not going to know God's teaching unless you're in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Am I true? Come on, this is, this is, I'm not trying to be super simple. I'm just trying to say this is what we need. And this is why the enemy is after us because we're going to teach you something to help you grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not, I don't have time for that, Pastor. Yes, you do. Don't lie to me. I know you do. You just get up a half hour earlier. Mm -hmm. You're selfish because you can't do it. Mm -hmm. That I can teach you that. Be unselfish. But the Word of God is going to teach you about Jesus, about God's Father's heart, about the precepts and the, the, the commandments and the things that you need to do to help you walk in this world to be a light for Jesus, to help your faith grow and not doubt, let doubt come into your mind and fear come into your mind and, and, and sin come into your mind. Sin starts here. It doesn't happen. It doesn't have something you actually do right away. Sin is something you don't just go out and do as a Christian. Sin happens in here, then it gets in here, and then all of a sudden we act on it. Mm -hmm. I can give you hundreds of examples, but I won't. It comes here. So how do we clean this up, Richard? How do we do this? How do we clean the mind? Through the Word. Through the, word. the washing of our mind through the Word. So I'm just telling you, I encourage you, in the morning, starting in 2016, you know, you don't have to come and report to me every Sunday. Hey, Pastor, every morning I read all the Proverbs and I prayed and, and, and I did all the stuff. I'm hoping you, you start off with 15 minutes and wind up your whole morning is with God. Why well, God? Go okay. I'm just telling you, if you start your day off with God, if you start at 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning, whatever time you start, you start your day off with God, the rest of your day just seems to go better. There's a song in my heart, Richard. I don't know. It just comes. I don't know the words to it. You know, I just sing. Right? I don't know what happens. It's because like, I'm in the Word of God. It's just I'm just happier that day. Mm -hmm. When I don't do it, then I'm in rushing off to do things. And I, I just mess up. Matter of fact, the day that I got my deer, I spent in the Word first. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go deer hunting. I wanted to get a deer. I got up early. But you know what I did before I got my car? I prayed, I worshiped, and I read the Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Did God give me a reward for a deer? I don't know. I think so. I'm just going to give him the credit. Okay? You go to work, something happens good, give God the credit. Right? Because you, you, the whole day, it's, it's just to have an attitude of gratitude. Thanksgiving. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Well, you can't, you got to practice Thanksgiving. Because we're not naturally, we're just complainers naturally. In our carnal mind, we're just complainers. Amen? In our spiritual mind, we're thankful and we're worshipful and we can't do it on our own. We're humble and we say, yes, God, you can through me because I'm, I'll let you. Otherwise, we're selfish. We're carnal minded. The Bible, look that up in your Bible this week. Carnal minded over spiritual minded. Cardinal heart over spiritual heart. Cardinal life over spiritual life. What's a cardinal life? Cardinal life is everything selfish. I, I, I. And uh, a spiritual life is whatever you want, Lord. I surrender my life to you. Give it whatever you want me to do. I'll do it today. <laughs> that's, a, that's, what, that's the difference. Whining or praising? Complaining or worshiping? Amen? There's an option. Selfishness or whatever, God. I'm here for you. It's my wealth? No, it's your wealth that you gave me, God. It's the job I earned? Thank you, God, for giving me the job I have. It's your, my own education. Look at all my stuff on my wall. I love me wall, right? I got all my degrees. 
or as, God, thank you for giving me the wisdom to do what you, you call me to do. Amen? Because our life on this earth right now is not for ourselves. It's for us to be a, a minister. I love what you said, Dion, going back to Matthew, saying this is, a, this is the reason we're here, is to make disciples, teaching them. Amen? We can't make disciples if we're selfish. All right. So, go down to verse 3. It says, let not set, let's not, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart. You sh so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. <laughs> oh, so if we put God first, and we put love, and we put, we put uh, steadfast love for God, right? We, we, we love. We put love around our heart, steadfast, remember, and let faithfulness, faithfulness, we don't even want to use that word in America anymore. What do you mean, fail? I do whatever I want. <laughs> Pastor said I gotta be here. Well, heck with that, I do whatever I want to do. We're not faithful. We do whatever we're selfish. That's our cardinal mind. When we're faithful, we're doing it in our spiritual mind. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. We have to walk in it's so we battle with it. It's not an easy thing I'm telling you to do. Because the world tells you differently. You are awesome, and you are amazing, and look at you, and look at you, and look at me, and look at I, and look what I've done. And over here we're saying, oh, God, I have, I'm not saying this side's more spiritual than that side, I'm just using an example, okay? Don't, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, over here, we're, you know, on the other side, we're, in, our, in our spiritual, we're submissive, and we're humble, and we're willing to serve, and we're willing to give, and of ourselves, and of our wealth, and whatever we have, because God, everything I have is of yours. Amen. I read a scripture on um, Thursday night that was uh, that says the, the the Gentiles, you and me, have found salvation through Jesus Christ, and our wealth is for to help all the Jewish people. Our wealth is to help all the temple. Our wealth is for more than ourselves. Why do you have all the wealth? And listen, I, I I'm not preaching because our offerings are down. Listen, God has blessed us, and we thank you for your faithfulness. It's been a it's been an amazing end of the year. And uh, Dion will get all the reports done at our business meeting in April. We'll share all that wonderful stuff with you. But God has a, a great plan for us in 2016. I'm going to share more about that um, to, to, uh, uh, in more detail next week. But um, 2016, we want to continue to grow as a family of missionary, uh, servant missionaries. And I think that the fam I think we're getting the family part down pretty good. I think we we care for one another. I think we love one another. And I think we um, uh, we could be more honest with one another. I think and be more open to one another when it comes to our needs and our our discouragements and whatever we're going through in, in life. And not and I, and I, I'm I'm not gonna say this that we have a bank account that we, anybody can come get what they want from. Maybe someday we'll have that. that um, we're not the Roman Catholic Church, so we're not rich. Um, but you know, you're struggling, and a brother and sister can reach out to you and pray for you, amen? And if you have means to help that person, and I know that's just like, you should help them. Um, so if we can't help, I do help, when we can't, I can't, you know, I just tell them to be honest with you, but I always want to pray with you. That's why it's vitally important over the next, uh, in January, that you get involved in, in one of the missional community groups. Um, because in that group is where you get connected and that's where you uh, are honest and we can pray for one another, we get to know each other's story and, and be able to help encourage each other in faith. You, uh, I think it's vitally important for us to teach you to fulfill the Great Commission which Dion referred to. So Dion, repeat that. It says we should what? We should baptize all nations, right? In the name of, no, we should, uh, right before the 28th, 28, 18. Uh, 18 says, what's the first part of it should go and make disciples, go into all nations. Go and make disciples, baptizing them okay. in the name of Father, Son, okay. So the goal part is you, not pastor, but I didn't say all pastors go and make disciples. No, all of us believers, every one of us have a responsibility to make disciples. So this year we want to make sure that we help you learn what that means. But I'm not, I didn't go to Bible college, but you don't have to go to Bible college. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? How many believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Raise your hand. Good. All of you can now make disciples. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean? Well, you don't have the answers for everything that's going on in life. You know what's interesting? 
We can talk through things in life when life situations happen. We can talk through them as believers. I can say, Rich, I can be honest, Richard, Rich, I don't know what the heck you're going through, man. But can I pray for you? You know, I don't know what you're going through, man, but I don't know how to, I don't I don't have an answer for you. This world does I don't have a world to answer. All I know is that I'm gonna pray for you because I, I can't I don't know I don't know how you deal with that situation, brother, but I'm gonna pray for you. That ha faith happens then. <laughs> so now we go from cardinal mind trying to figure out his situation to a spiritual thing saying God has an answer. Well, I'll agree with you on that answer. When it comes, we'll give him the praise for it. Right? Because God's gonna give us wisdom how to deal with this situation. God's gonna give you wisdom how to handle whatever problem you're dealing with. He, he, we're praying for those doctors that God gives the answer. We pray for them in the emergency room. Do you mind if we pray before you take my, my granddaughter into the MRI? Oh yeah, so the two doctors, um, that's cute too, because they just, yeah, the ground's out, you know, they, they put their, uh, they're in church, you know. They put their heads down, you know, I know. They, 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 uh, they're open to all faiths and stuff, but I, we pray for them. We, I pray for more for them than I pray for Esther. That God would guide her hand and do, you know, whatever. And I, I know it touched him because as soon as I started praying, the presence of God filled the room. Right? That that um, we call it, I don't know what you call it, God's presence. Right? He just showed up. Just the anointing, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Father's hug, whatever you want to call it. Just the Shekinah glory of God, the, the presence of God filled the, that emergency room. And Tina and... And uh, um, Jesus and Amy were there, and Esther is laying on the bed, and just the two doctors, and they were just, it was just a, a, a sweet presence of God. I love when God does that, because uh, I know it's not, not, not for my benefit, but it's for the benefit of people I'm calling, I'm praying for, you know, I love it so much that Father God answers our prayer. So uh, I want to encourage you, and uh, this year, uh, as we go forward, to look at your uh, spiritual mind instead of your cardinal mind, okay? And uh, I want to share with you a, a, a couple of scripture verses that the Lord, if you have your Bibles, would you, um, um, would you turn to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, please? And I, where I want to end up with, see I put in here uh, Matthew chapter 7, which I know that's what already in my notes, so I was ending with that beyond, so <laughs> that was perfect. Um. Ephesians chapter 4, it tells us, this is my favorite verse in the Bible that I, I've said in this church probably a million times. I prayed over this church when it was empty. Uh, I pray, I'm praying, I'm praying over, over you today. Uh, but if you look at this whole section of Ephesians, Paul was writing the book of Ephesians while he was in prison. He was writing to the church at Ephesus and he was giving some instruction. And he was going a little bit deeper in spiritual growth than he had in the past. He wanted to share with them some deeper secrets of God that he got it revealed to him. And he was putting it to, to pen and paper, and he was writing this. So he goes to write this section, uh, verse chapter 4, about the unity of the body of Christ, which I believe we are half getting to. Uh, when Pastor Kim prayed on... On Thursday night, he prayed for the unity. When Pastor Jorge prayed for the for the church, for our churches, he prayed for the unity that we be one. And in our church uh, here, that with our in our group here, I want us to be one in mind and spirit. I want us to uh, love and care for one another, practice that in here, and hopefully we can practice it. We'll be able to live that outside the church walls. So we have to live in unity. Paul is writing this because he says something that's very significant. I'll get to in, in the later part of this, but let me just uh, uh, go to verse one in chapter four. It says, "As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received." Who has received the calling? As pastors and evangelists and past all those guys? No, I think we all receive the calling. But let me share with you what he, Paul is referring to here. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Oh, put that on the tablet of your heart. Write that on your mirrors in your bathroom and put it on the refrigerator. Amen? Look at that. It says, be patient, completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing one another in love. Making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bonds of peace. We can only do that if we're spiritually minded. We, in, when our cardinal mind gets in the way, we want to argue about how the church should be ran or what color the wall should be or how we do this or that. We get in our cardinal mind, but in our spiritual mind, we say, oh, listen, she's got a good idea and he's got a good idea. We're going to work this out because God's going to be glorified in this, not us. 
Amen. Right? That's what we've done. Uh, Rajiv, myself, Richard, and he's on the board. Uh, we work together. We, we have this. We don't agree on everything. I mean, it's not like we, they're just yes people, but, you know, we work it out. We figure out the real, the betterment of the, of, the, of the church family. It's not about us. It's not our money. It's not our building. It's none of this is ours. This is all God. So that's our heart. So you'll, you'll learn that about us, too. And we want that to spread through our church. Uh, many efforts, um, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bonds of peace. There is one body. There's not, so this is what I love about Pastor Jorge and Pastor Kim coming. I, I teach this to them. As young pastors, I teach this to them. I said that we're one church. There's not many churches. So right now, with the three churches that meet in this building, let's just be one. Let's work together. And we do. So when the truck broke down, we all had help pay for it. Guess what? Every church helped pay for the truck. So we could work, so we could wouldn't have a snowfall and go this winter, right? So we all pitched in for that. When things need to be fixed around the church, we all work together. When they need to use something, I'm like, the building's yours. You know, just tell me when your schedule's here. You want to have a special meeting? Pastor uh, uh, Kim didn't have a Friday night youth meeting yesterday, but Pastor Jorge wanted to have a special prayer meeting last night. Guess what? He came here and used the building. Guess what? It's okay. It just used the building. This is not my building. I just want to know when people are in it. That's all. You know, so I can turn on the heat and stuff and for that man make sure there's all the papers in there and all that kind of stuff we want it we want them to we want you we want this place to be used for the kingdom of god that's why i put it in the middle of this this area this is a you would know if you get you need to walk these neighbors <laughs> neighbor. this is all most of these are retired professors from the university that live around this side and uh, grad students on this side so hey you know their their mind is nothing about spiritual things uh, at all and, and just get to know them you find out so Pray for the Baptist uh, church here for a reason. Okay, where did I leave off at? Uh, there, there's one body and, and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ appointed it. There, this is why he said, when he ascended on high, he led captive in his train and gave gifts to man. When he ascended, when he ascended, in the, excuse me, into heaven, he led captive free all those that were in that died before Jesus was uh, was resurrected. All those people, all those believers were, were led up to heaven at this point. And he gave gifts to men. These are gifts he gets. What does he ascended it means also that he, uh, except that he also descended to the lower regions of the earth. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. That's Jesus. It was he who gave some to be apostles, and some to be past, uh, prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare. Listen, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here. Right here. I, I, tell, I tell the board. You, we're going we're gonna to create a board, and we're going to look at the qualifications in the Bible. So we did our bylaws last year and we all voted on it and we approved them. We said, okay, a deacon, a board member has to have these qualifications, right? And our, my, my, even my district said, well, why are you using those scripture verses? Why are you doing that? I said, because it's in the word of God. And they said, okay. They had their own set of rules, you know, we could adopt them or we could make our own kind of set of rules. We, we decided we're gonna to default to this. Is that okay? And that's what we did about read about. So to prepare, and this is why to prepare God's people to work the, for the works of service, so that the body of Christ, which is all of us here and outside this building, those that are believers, may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith. What is the unity of the faith that we need to be equal to? Or what do we need to know? What is the unity that we all need to be in? What should we all agree on? One thing we should all agree on is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that Jesus Christ died on the cross, and that through his blood, we can have forgiveness of all our sins, our past sins, the sins that we're dealing with right now. Every sin can be forgiven because of Jesus. And we can be delivered from those sins because he rose from the dead. And we're baptized in water. We're not only baptized because we're saying we're going to follow Jesus, but we're baptized as deliverance from our old past, and we're now a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away, and all things become new. That's what we have to believe in. That's where unity has to be in. Amen? Amen. And also, I'm going to add this. We also fill with the power of the Holy Spirit. God poured out His Spirit so we could be His witnesses everywhere in the world. 
There's a baptism into Jesus. There's baptism, baptism in the Holy Spirit that comes us power to be his witnesses in the world. See, most churches don't talk about that anymore because it's like, it's not, what do you mean? That's kind of weird. We can talk about uh, healing and laying hands and all that stuff in 1 Corinthians. What are you talking about? No, that's <laughs> relevant today. Just the church is afraid to use it talk about it. This church is not going to be afraid about it. That's why we have the problem we have. Mm -hmm. That's why the enemy wants to close this church down. That's why he attacks me, attacks my wife, my children, my board members. Why? Because he doesn't want this to happen. We're going to teach you how to walk in the fullness of Christ. We're going to teach you how to have, be happy. Our, our, I read one scripture that said, tickling ears. We're just going to satisfy you, make you feel good today. <laughs> doesn't mind to make it then. come out of there. <laughs> I called Benny, but I, did, I don't know if I got the right number. I said, happy uh, New Year's phone. I want to go to Jamaica, that's why. Um, <laughs> so, all over the world, there's Christians dying for the faith. This is what they're, this is what they're dying for. Mm -hmm. They're not dying because they're a Catholic or they're uh, assembly of God or church of God. Or, they're not dying for that. They're dying because they believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? So you and me have to say, okay, I'm not going to die today for the gospel, but I'm not going to compromise what I believe. When the conversation comes up, no, you're wrong. Jesus Christ died for you. He forgave you. He provided your healing. He can do the same for you as he done for me. Amen. But you have to believe that. So that's why we have to come into the fullness of Christ. So look at it. It says, the, the reason God gave all those people is to prepare God's people in for the works of servant so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. So we don't have all knowledge. We need to be built up in the knowledge of God. We need to be encouraged in the knowledge of God. We don't have it. It's not instantaneous when we become a believer. Also, I have all this knowledge. You have to grow up in knowledge. you got to grow up in understanding the heart of the Father and why He sent Jesus. Why He, he sent and provided for that. When He made us in His image in Genesis, why do we what, what, where did we lose our image of God? Mm -hmm. How did we lose the image of God? When God says in Genesis chapter 1 that He made man and woman in His image. Where, how did we lose the image? We lost the image through sin. When Adam knew sin, sin entered the world. Now we're not like God anymore. But as a believer, now as a believer, we can now carry the image of God. Now we have full access into the throne room of God. We don't have to be outside killing lambs and goats and whatever. <laughs> for forgiveness. We can go right into the throne room of God and we can be in His presence. Because now we carry the very image of God. What the world's looking for. That's, so we, if we're in our carbon line as a Christian, oh, we can throw a few bucks over here and help the poor. We can do these, these, these acts of kindness. But we never share the fullness in our carbon line. We say, here, let me help you. Let me give you some help. We want some of my wealth. I'll give you some help in here or help here. But let me share you. The wealth that I got is not my own. See, what happened, I, I was a lost sinner. And Jesus came and changed my heart. And now he gave me all the stuff. I'm going to help you with this. It's a different story, right? You present it in a different way. It's not just like you're, you're earning. So I, I hate this. Uh, in high school now, they want all the kids to do uh, uh, community service, but they don't include anything with Christianity. It's going to be anything else but a church thing. I mean, in the church, we're going to teach you everything you have is not your own, it's God's. You got a nice car, Richard? It's not your car. You know that already. You already cracked up 10 or 12 of them, right? Since I've known you. Uh, you know, so you know they're not they're not his own, but they're not his. You need to use my car, I got a car. Who needs to use a car? Right? I have two cars. Right? I have uh, two red cars. One's in Indiana with Andy and the, the Kyle Fu group is using it this weekend because uh, they had a small group, so they drove the car down there. Matter of fact, Kyle will pray for Andy. Down there, the young lady who did not went to church to go, not a believer, is a believer today. Last mm -hmm. night she gave her life to Katie, right? Gave her life to Jesus last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, this is what happened. Katie went to the Chi Alpha group, which normally all Christians that are on campus go to this group to get encouraged to join missions. Andy's praying, God, she needs to hear her salvation message. But he was a he this 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 salt meeting, he was a ministry, he was a teaching app. Last year he taught, this year he's not teaching, he's just, he's just took a group. So he prayed, God, we need to hear. So they give one salvation message last night. Nobody moved when they did an altar call. Nobody at all. A young man that got saved at salt last year goes up to the microphone and says, Listen, I know there's somebody here that I, I'll tell you my story. He tells a story how he just waited in the back. And he says, then, then I finally reached out to my pastor and said, hey, take me up front. And he came up front. 
And, and he said, there's, there's somebody here that you just need to reach out to your pastor and he'll, they'll take you up front. And guess what Katie did? Reached out to Andy and said, take me up front. The only person that got saved last night was Katie. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Thousands of people there. The only person that got saved last night was Katie. Katie went to get saved. Amen. Andy, instead of just saying, let's come to this event, you're going to come to this event because we want to teach you about Jesus. She knew that coming. God knew that or she was coming. Amen? And an opportunity arose, but it wasn't Andy, it was somebody else, so that she could hear the message from somebody else. It was amazing. It was amazing. God it cares about a college student on Madison, in Madison, Wisconsin, to go all the way to Indiana to hear the message that Jesus loves her. Amen? Amen. She say, we want you to walk in the folds of Christ. So you're not thinking in your cardinal mind about Christianity longer and how to satisfy your, your spiritual needs. You go to a bigger picture. I'm here because God has a bigger plan for me. This plan is a way above me. It's way above everybody at Capital City Church, but we know God has a bigger plan. And when we all join together, we can accomplish it. Amen? As a family, we can accomplish what God has for us. What is it going to mean in your life individually? Because I know we're selfish people, so we're going to, what does it mean to me? It means that we'll love each other more. And you'll be loved. It means that we'll be transparent in our needs to one another. And not hide them and be selfish. Mm -hmm. Say so we can handle it. Because that's me. So, we're open up and be transparent, be real to each other. That's why I do it with the board. I tell you guys everything. I tell these guys everything that's going on in my life. Every problem I have, they know about. They can write my history from the last 10 years I've been here on all the stuff that happened to me and my family. Because I didn't want to, because I'm not better than anyone here. Mm -hmm. I go through stuff like you do. Amen? And if we can be open as a family, then we can share when we have a need. Like I didn't find out what need kind of car accident until Thursday. Because she wasn't coming to the meeting. Oh, what happened? She, and it was a text message too. So um, we, we have this lack of, we, we have this communication issue. We don't have a communication issue. We have a, a selfish issue. Because we have all the means. Right? I mean, we can do everything on here. You can text me. You can email me. You can send me a carrier page. I don't care what you do. Let me know you have an issue. You have a physical problem? I want to know about it. I'll, I'll text it out to the board. We'll all pray for you. Oh, I don't want the people to know I'm going to the doctor and getting this done. Well, why not? <laughs> we'll pray for you. We'll pray for the doctor. We'll pray for the equipment so it works properly. We'll pray for the x-ray machine, the AKG machine. We'll pray for everything so everything works properly. So whatever touches you will be anointed of God and it'll work. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. It's praying. It's pride, yes. You know, it's a cardinal mind. That's the time we've got to get rid of our cardinal mind and walk in our spiritual mind. Things will change for all of us. It, and it's exactly, we're private. We don't want people to know we have a problem. We're people, you know, we're just whatever. We're so, we think we're self-sufficient and we need, don't need a Savior. We need a Savior every day. Amen. Every day. That's why I said, start your day off reading, praising, think, being thankful. Because we need God. We need him. We need him. And you know what? As you read a, and um, as you read a little bit more in the scripture, you find out God needs you too. See, God created you in his image. And you find out scripture for fellowship. Mm -hmm. Think about in the garden. Adam and Eve were in the garden. Hang on. It says in the cool of the evening time, in the afternoon, in the evening, early evening, God, I don't know, maybe it was after dinner, I don't know, maybe it was before dinner. I don't know what it would say. But in the evening, in the cool of the evening, it says, God came and spent time with Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. His creation. He wants to spend time with you. Father God. And because of sin, he couldn't do that. So Jesus, because of his death and his burial and his resurrection, now provides us a way that now we can hang out with God. Amen. I mean, how cool is that? Our daddy, who created us, in his image, wants to spend time with you. Now we're just too busy. We're too prideful. We're just, we're just too much stuff. And that's why we have to be, if I would point this way, because uh, this is right. This is the right, my right anyway. And the Bible does talk about right and left. And the right, anyway, we'll get it all there. Uh, it's right to be in your spiritual mind all the time. Thinking about God and let God speak to your heart. 
So the Bible says, pray without ceasing. How do you pray without ceasing? Continuous. Don't close your eyes driving on the highway, but you can still pray going on the highway. Mm -hmm. Continuously. Right? God, pray for that person that just cut me off. Hallelujah, Father. I don't know what they're going through right now, but they just really made me mad. And I forgive, please forgive me. And I'm just going to back off a couple miles an hour and let them get ahead of me. And I'll have to curse them out. Right? Amen. Spiritual minded, carnal minded. What the heck was that person thinking? So who gave them a driver's license? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can go through the whole thing. We've done it. We all done it. I drive out every day, so I know. I did, you know, I got to know, Lord. You know what? I'm not in that much of a rush. I can just back off my gas pedal a little bit. Mm -hmm. Give them the road. Here you go. It's fine. I don't get, my blood pressure doesn't get up. I don't get mad. I don't curse them. I don't say nothing. I don't wave <laughs> at them. Right? I don't have to do that stuff. Because I'm in my car, I'm in my, my, my spiritual mind. Lord, they must be going, they must have been hurt, Lord. Help protect them. Mm -hmm. they hurt. Amen? Amen? It's a different attitude. We can't have an attitude without on our own. We just can't. We need God. All right? So look at the rest of this. Um, when I get to all my sermon today, that's okay. Um, I will share I will share a uh, closing thought here in just a second. Um, it's a pertinent to, to your, your spiritual walk. It says, uh, look at verse 13, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. So you see, I, I don't get into mature. Because everybody know what mature is? Mm -hmm. Mature Christian, right? Not, not a baby, whiny, toddler, griping, carnal Christian, <laughs> right? We're talking about a mature Christian that is happy just because God is his Savior and Lord. That even though I'm going through these trials and tribulations, my faith is not wavered. <laughs> even though I might have fear for a moment, I cast that out in the name of Jesus because we're perfect love is in the Father's arms. I have no fear. Oh, Father, just wrap your arms around right now because I just I can't take care of the situation on my own. I just need you, Lord. And, and, and our Father is right there to wrap his arms around me. Amen. Faith rises up and I believe what the Word of God says, because I've been in the Word, and I know that I have a promise that God said He'd take care of me and guide me and lead me, amen, through the valleys, through the shadows, through all the, the problems of our lives. I know that, so Father, thank you for letting me believe in you. And so I'm mature, I'm a mature Christian, now attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. So what the Word of God said, what Paul was saying here, Paul's in prison, I'm going to read here just a little bit, he's, he's chained to Roman soldiers, he's about ready to die, and he's pen these are some of the last words that Paul's writing to the church saying, hey, you know, listen, this, this is not baby food, now I'm going to give you some meat, now I'm going to give you something that you're going to need to help you, sustain you, so you can walk in the fall, he wants you to be in the fullness, I don't know, what does it mean to be, how about, what does it mean not to judge a person ever, or anybody ever? What, what does it mean to look at every person in our school, in, in our workplace, or in the marketplace and look at them that, like God sees them? Mm -hmm. Pray that prayer all day. Pray that prayer this week. Pray, God, how do you see the world? Let God break your heart when you see the world like God sees the world. Mm -hmm. Then we can attain the fullness of Jesus. We stop being selfish and prideful and, and those things, and we start saying, God, I remember praying that for the very first time. Stay here in North Carolina, on my knees, in my bedroom, praying, God, show me what you see in the world. I, I couldn't stop crying for hours. Because God loves everybody. He showed me the brokenness of all the people I work with. All, all of, I was in a, I was a, in a, a Marine uh, base at Camp, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and I witnessed to everybody. I mean, my colonel, my everybody, even the frogs in the back a uh, lot. I mean, I wanted everybody to know about Jesus. And I asked Jesus to show me what he sees. He showed me their sin. He showed me the, the blackness and the darkness. And he showed me hell. And, and in my mind's eye, I had to see it like a movie picture thing. In my mind's eye, and I just began to weep because I knew people were going there. And I had the message of hope that they needed. And I God. Give me another chance tomorrow to share Jesus with them. And he would. It was time after time. I was able to walk into a, in one of our shops, and, and one of the Marines would be there. He'd be all perplexed in his face. What's going on? He said, well, me and my wife had a big fight. I 
I think we're going to get a divorce. And no, no, that's not what God wants for you. And I prayed for them, and it never got a divorce. I remember when the baby was sick, I went in that uh, machine shop and prayed for them. I, I didn't, I wasn't learned. I didn't go to Bible college yet. I know nothing but this. God can, has an answer for everything. I was so simple mind. I just believe what I read was truth, and I'm going to share it with my, my guys. But you pray this week. Ask God to show you his heart for the world. Mm. We can't be his disciples unless we have his heart. Because otherwise we're selfish. We need to have God's heart so we can see the world like he sees it. Oh, he sees all our problems. He sees all our situations. He sees everything. And yeah, there's an answer on the way. Guys, you might have been praying for a long time. God, there's an answer coming. And there's victory on the other side. I don't know why your journey is long or short. I don't have those answers. I just I just tell you, don't waver in your faith. Continue to believe. Because all things will work out for good, for his good, and for your good. One last thing, I want to, I want to, I want to preach, um, I want to preach this whole chapter uh, soon on the full armor of God, which is chapter six. Go to turn, turn chapter six in Ephesians. Hmm. And uh, Richard, will you just stand up and read that for me? Up to the, up to the fire darts. Did you really ask for forgiveness? Did God really forgive you? All those things. The enemy, the devil does that to you. you got to know you're saved. That's the helmet of salvation. And I won't go through the rest of it, but the fiery darts at the end, I want to talk about this. It says, hold up the shield of faith. Roman soldiers used to have these small little shields. They were like, you know, you've probably seen them in the movies. They're little round shields. The Roman soldiers would have them. But when the enemy would throw these fiery darts at them, they would, they would uh, the darts were like, the, the, it's interesting because the word translated is out missile and dart and an arrow. So what they did in those days, they would take these hollow uh, tubes, like um, uh, bamboo, right? They'd fill them up with uh, a type of material that would catch on fire. They'd light the end of it and they would throw them at the Roman soldiers. And they would hit the wooden shield and the shield would burn up. So then the shield weren't there so they could attack the Roman, Roman soldiers. The Romans were smart. They would take their shields and they made them large. So they have these, you see the Romans would have large shields or ornate, but on the front of the shield, the wood was leather. Mm -hmm. And before they go into battle, they would soak that leather. And so that leather would be soaked and wet. And so it, of course it would be heavy, but anyway, it would, it would protect them from those fiery darts. So we're taking, if you will, the shield of faith. And no matter what the enemy throws at you, because think about a, a dart, if you will, filled with some kind of liquid, gasoline or whatever, it would hit you, and then it would, what happens? It explodes, and there's fire everywhere, right? And that's what the enemy does. He comes at you, and he says, oh, you, you're not a believer, and all of a sudden you start doubting everything. 
Doubting the pastor, doubting this, doubting the word of God. Well, was that Bible written in King James? Or was it written in the NIV? Or was it supposed to be this or that? And also we have confusion all over the place. We don't know what we <laughs> believe anymore. Come on. That's what happens. So the enemy brings doubt and fear on you. Oh my God, is this going to have a record? Uh, dude, did the pastor really pray for me? How can we pray for him? But I, that, nothing happened. Was it his faith or was it my faith? Or, and, and this confusion just goes crazy and explodes. Those fire retards explode. But by faith, I say, no, the word of God says mm -hmm. that I am his child. And that my daddy loves me. And I can call on my daddy anytime because Jesus provided a way for me now. Mm -hmm. And I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff to come for me. Remember, I shared with uh, Psalms 23. He makes me lie down and be pastor's Just turn there, and I'll close with that. 23rd Psalm. Which is not for females. For every encouragement. Right? Page 508. Where is it? Where's your Bible? Oh my goodness. You cannot come to church without a Bible. You gotta you get Jack, get her a Bible. Somebody get her one. Buy her one. Do something. You have a Bible? You have a Bible at home. Oh my God. Bring your Bible to church. Bring it. Then I know you at least use it one day a week. All right? Bring your Bible. My goodness, Jackie. I love you, girl. I call a text message, you know, 
I just text message everybody. How you doing? How you doing? I love you. I love you. Right? I just text message everybody. How you doing? Hi, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right? That's the shepherd's staff. Right? What is the rod? The rod is an offensive weapon that when the wolf and the enemy comes in, he can throw it at him and knock him right through the head. How did, what is that? That's the word of God. If I know the word of God, Jesus defeated the enemy through the word of God. Mm -hmm. The enemy will use the word of God to misuse it and to dece be deceitful. And Jesus tells you the truth. You've got to know the difference. You can't know the difference if you're not in the word. Mm -hmm. I can't teach you that on Sunday morning. You have to learn it. You have to be in the word of God. I read an article this week. Well, let me finish. Okay. Uh, I will fear to be for you are with me. You stir out staff to cover me. You prepare me, uh, a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Hallelujah. We'll get to that today. You anoint my head with oil. My cup will overflow. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will go in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will dwell with God forever. Mm -hmm. I can dwell with God right now. Right now, I don't have to wait until then. Right now, His presence can be here. Right now, His peace can be with you. Right now, you can feel loved by Him. Not, you don't have to wait. It's right now. Amen. But we have to, folks, 2016, we have to not think in our cardinal mind and how we're going to handle this and how, what we're going to do next. We have to think spiritually in our spiritual mind and say, okay, God, even though I walk through the valley, I, have, I will fear you because you are with me. I'm not going to waver in that. I was walking in that hospital room with my granddaughter laying there on that bed, just all full of drugs, out. Little machine breathing for her, all the tubes in her, all the medicine going in her, right? I don't have no fear. I don't have no fear. There's no fear. Matter of fact, I text that to, to uh, Amy Jesus last night. Let me read this to you. As I was falling asleep, taking that one home later. This is God. This is from God. It's not 
This is not of man. This is God. Be, and you need to be involved in a missional community group. So Rajiv has a group, uh, Tina and I have a group, and Andy and Rachel have a group. You need to be involved in a group. If you're not in a group, then you're sinning. I mean, you, you need to be involved in a group. So you, uh, you need to be involved in a group. You need to grow. You're going to grow because in the group, right? Where's my group, right? Don't we get in some good Bible study, right? We talk about God's Word. Everybody shares in the group. Even even Cindy shares. Uh, Cindy's so wise for her age. I want you to know God is anointing on her. And she's going to do more than a ball, be a ballerina. God's going to do more, much more, much greater. Maybe she'll be the national ballerina person. I don't know. But that's God has. God has more than we can ever even think or imagine. That's what the word God says. But you have to be in the word of God. Amen? Let's pray. First of all, I want to ask this. Everybody just bother your heads. Nobody's looking around the first time. You say, Pastor Bob, I am nowhere near God. I like, I'm not even accepted. I don't know, I don't know if I'm a follower of Jesus, but today I realize that I need to be a follower of Jesus. I want to give my life to Him. I want to serve Him. I want to give my heart to Him. If that's you today, would you just raise your hand and put it right back down? Yes, anyone else? Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Okay, how about if I'm a Christian and I've really been, I've been, let's be straight up. I've been more carnally minded than I've been spiritually minded. If that's you, just raise your hand. Raise it up high. Way out there. Don't be afraid. God knows your sin. All right. Put your hands down. Thank you. Now I want to give you a moment. I'm not going to have you come up. I want to give you a moment. Believers, ask God right where you're at. Lord, please, please forgive me. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Lord, help me to be more spiritually minded. Help my mind to change so my heart will be fully after God. Help me to serve you, Lord, and serve one, one of everybody in my family. We are family. Help me, Lord, to not be selfish in my walk or life when you admit it. Help me not to be prideful and be able to confess my faults to one another. Because in James tells us when we confess our faults, our sins are forgiven. <laughs> kind of interesting how that happens. We don't hide it in our heart. It's not like a cancer cell that goes and grows inside of us, our sin. But now it's confessed. It's out there. Now the, the master surgeon, Jesus, can forgive it and take it away and heal that hurt that's been in your heart. I thank you, Father, for everyone here that raised their hand. And Father, I do ask you to forgive them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you care for each person that's here today. Father, I just ask you to help us to grow in the folds of Christ. I ask your blessings, God, as each person gets up in the morning to remember, yes, I'm going to be thankful, I'm going to be praiseful, I'm going to spend time in your word. God, help us to, to live like that, to put the change us into your full image, and change us into